Today with Joseph Prince. The Bible never talks about health and wealth gospel. The Bible talks about the gospel of grace. That's where it all starts. When you are made righteous, amen, you receive the blessings of the righteous. You are in Christ, so near to God. When you pray, you must always have the sense, I'm like, not like God so far away. Talk to God. You are so near, nearer you cannot be. For in the person of His Son, you are as near as He. God quickens the dead and calls those things that are not as though they are. The Bible says that's what we are to be. Call those things that are not as though they are. That are not what? Not visible, not sensible to touch, right? Nothing that you can hear or whatever. Yet, yet, it will always come out in the flesh, in the realm, like this uh, building. Amen. Now we can see it. Now we can feel it. Now we can, we can uh, 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 look at it. We can take pictures of it. Right? But it came out of faith Amen. when there was nothing. Amen. But faith, like God is a spirit, God brought forth the visible world. Amen. Everything visible came from the invisible. Amen. Amen. So think about it, people. God calls those things that are not in the physical realm yet as though they are there, isn't it? Amen? God calls Abraham when he didn't have a son through Sarah, yet, right? You are a father of many nations. You are a father, not, not you will be. In the Hebrew, literally, I have made you a father of many nations. When he didn't even have a son through Sarah, his wife. Father of many, God changed his name. God says, from now on, your name is called Abraham, which means father of many. Imagine the wife calling him, you know, in their old age, to come back and eat lunch or dinner in the fields. Father of many, father of many. All the village started thinking, oh, poor lady, <laughs> poor Abraham. They want, a, they want a child so much, they changed their names, you know. One is called princess. All right, one is called father of many. Pray for them. <laughs> father of many, father of... So God, like God, calls those things that are not as though they are. God saw darkness. God didn't say, whoa, so dark. It will become darker. <laughs> no, God called what He wanted. What He wanted is light. God says, light be. God saw darkness, but God didn't call darkness. God didn't call what He saw. He called forth what He wanted to see. That's God's way. That's faith. I believe and therefore I speak. Amen. So long before you see, you got you to believe it. I'm the righteous of God in Christ before you can manifest righteous thoughts, righteous behavior, righteous actions. Amen. Right believing leads to right living. Amen. So in this area, you know what? Some people, the way they say it, it, it sounds so bad. They make it sound like, like for example, health and wealth gospel. Sounds bad, right? It sounds bad. Health and wealth gospel. Honestly, I never subscribed to a health and wealth gospel. I thought the gospel is the gospel of grace and peace. Amen. Amen. But it does produce. Yep. Okay, you don't like wealth? Provisions. Amen. You don't like uh, health? Well-being. <laughs> peace. Okay? But the, when you put it like that, health and wealth gospel, it sounds bad. Because the Bible never talks about health and wealth gospel. The Bible talks about the gospel of grace. That's where it all starts. When you are made righteous, amen, you receive the blessings of the righteous. Amen. amen. Another one that they like to say, this is the name it and claim it bunch. They call you all, huh? Name it and claim it bunch. This is the name it and claim it bunch. Oh, that church is the name it and claim it church. That's making fun of what? God calls those things that are not as though they were. Jesus hurt. All right, that person is dead. Did Jesus confess the death? No. Amen? He didn't confess what was in the natural. He confessed what he wanted to see. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. All right? He did not say, all right, that he was dead. At one point, he said, because the disciples, they cannot understand. He says, I go, you know, to wake Lazarus. He's sleeping. Oh, it's good. If he's sleeping, let him sleep. <laughs> then Jesus said, Lazarus is dead. All right? That's because of their weakness. He came down to the level. But you find that always Jesus always calls those things that are not as though they are. 
He tells people who are, who are you know, um, uh, withered in their hand, stretch forth your hand. Amen. He called forth what he wanted to see, wholeness in that hand. Stand, take up your bed and walk. Amen. Fear not, believe only and she shall be made whole. Amen. That's faith. Amen. And this whole universe bows to faith. I'll tell you this. Why? Because this universe is made by God. Not by this cancel culture. Not by these people who are now trying to take dominion over the world. It's not. Are you listening? The enemy was always there behind my shoulder saying, you messed up again. How can you be, you know, living up to God's expectations and standards? I was always feeling condemned. I never was seeing in my life the things that the Bible actually talked about. And what really set me free, or at least in the right path, was believing that, you know what? It doesn't matter how many times you mess up, I'm still going to love you. And that inspiration, that power of grace, really provided me the opportunity to see the light at the end of the tunnel. When I heard Joseph Prince, I just began to know that this was a missing link. This was the key, I had found it. And every time I hear him, I just, I just get freer and freer and freer. If the gospel of grace has impacted your life, I would like to invite you to join us as a grace legacy builder. Let's advance the gospel of grace together. Visit the link on your screen to be part of leaving a legacy of grace today. So when you hear this kind of thing, don't swing to this side. By the way, there are extremes. There are people, I claim this person's Cadillac. I claim this person's Lamborghini. You don't claim people's Lamborghini. Hello, wake up. <laughs> Your God is not so poor so as to claim the, and, and all they claim is Lamborghini, Ferrari, that kind of thing. You know, I mean, okay, you, you want to, does God answer that prayer? These are the things that, that give a bad name to the true teaching. Yeah. Yeah. It's prosperity, with a purpose that God wants us to see, that we can be a blessing to many. Yes. So the first thing we need to establish, you gotta believe, this. why? Why must we believe? Is it important, I said just now, is it important for us to believe or not believe? Does it matter, Pastor, if I believe? It matters because your spirit, you don't even realize it, your spirit is open to, when you believe, that it, it, it God wants you to have it, God wants to prosper you, your spirit is open, that's the faith realm, and you begin to see breakthroughs of the breakthroughs, miracle of the miracle, blessings of the blessings, when in the natural there's none. But on the other hand, if you don't believe that, you know, uh, this is for you, all right? In fact, you shun it, you won't receive. God will never force you to receive something you, you don't want to receive. You know, before you were saved, Amen? You might even be against Christ, be against Christians and make fun of them, make fun of church and all that. Right? How do you get saved? You heard the Word. There's no other way. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Either someone shared with you the Word of God or, or, about salvation, about Christ, the Gospel, or you saw it. Amen? The Gospel being preached. It is still the Word. Amen? Being watched, being heard. And then you have faith. And then you can be saved. Amen. So it's in everything you need to hear the word and that's why I'm preaching. Amen. Are you listening, people? Amen. Now, we are heading in tough days, all right? Back to uh, Genesis 26, Abraham's son Isaac. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Say famine. Say famine. So famine is a time of lack, okay? Now, this famine is bad, okay? That means there's not enough to eat. Your crops cannot grow. And the Bible goes on to say it was, it was a famine that was severe, just like the time of, uh, if you keep on reading, it's the time of uh, Abraham, which was severe. And uh, the time of Joseph, it was also severe. Whenever famine comes into the world, so first of all, we see that famine does come periodically to the world. Okay, so what makes this famine something we can learn from, from for today? You know, when you read the Bible, like I told you in the lesson on how to study the Bible, is that a lot of things written in the past, in the stories in the Old Testament and all that, are two post types for us to learn today. In other words, God put them there because it's, it's so relevant. It speaks to us today. God who saw the future, put it in the book then, that it might speak to us who are in the future of what happened then, and what they did then is what we can do today. And the result we saw then is the result we can see today. Amen. Are you with me so far? So first we established already that we are Abraham's seed. 
right? It says, uh, if you are Christ, are you Christ? Yes. Turn to your neighbor and ask, are you Christ? Christ, uh, Christ, belong to Christ. That is, are you someone belonging to Christ? Are you Christ? Right? If you are Christ, then what? You are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise. Amen. So you are the heir according to the promise. So the clearest picture of an, a direct seed of Abraham, we know the seed above all the seed that God is referring to is Christ. And if you are Christ, you are in Him. As He is, so are we, you see? Right? So you are Abraham's seed. But a direct illustration of that is Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham, the promised seed, all right? That came finally. So this story of Ab how I, Abraham's son, Isaac, dealt with the famine, okay? Now, many of you know the story, but you know, the Holy Spirit is bringing it into a new light. Okay, so back to Genesis 26. Drop down and drop down. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land and I'll be with you and bless you for to you and your descendants I give all these lands. Now perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. So the first thing God said to, to, to uh, um, Abraham's seed, all of you, don't go down to Egypt. What does that mean? When famine happens, don't give up on God's ways and use the world's ways. Amen. And remember this, every time it says about Egypt, it is always go down. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. But like, like Jonah, when Jonah rebelled against God, it was down, 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 down. He went down to Jopa. All right? The port. He got into a boat, went down into a boat. When he was in the boat, went down to sea. All right? The boat, they throw him down. He went down into the sea. Went down into the whale's belly. So, Moral of the story, very simple. Turn away from God, down, 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 down. Amen. Come back to God, up, 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 up. Amen. So don't go down to the world's ways. Now, the world will offer you a lot of things. Immediate gratification. And we got a whole generation of people who want quick money. They want quick returns. They're not interested in he that gathers by labor shall increase. They're not interested in, in uh, honoring the boss and the company, which is the spirit of what Colossians writes about, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward. Somehow pay, impatience has come in. They are not looking for that job anymore. I, I believe that I'm called by God to prosper. Now, they, this, this is extreme. All right? They're not going by the Bible way. All that I'm, I'm going to teach and in the weeks to come, will be on God's kind of prosperity, which is not world kind of prosperity. Now you might be sitting here, Pastor, <laughs> I don't need all this. I have many millions in my bank. You know, I think Billy Sunday was one that says, he who has no money is poor, but he that has nothing but money is poorer, even poorer. Truly poor. <laughs> you have nothing but money. No, I'm not talking about that. There are poor people with plenty of money. I mean, God blessing you in every area of your life. Amen. Every area of your life. Amen. What the Bible calls in Joshua 1, 8, good success. Amen. What the Bible calls again and again, whatever He does prospers. Whatever He does prospers. And the Lord will bless you. And, and uh, you shall lend unto many, Deuteronomy 28 and right now, you shall lend unto many nations and you shall not borrow. Amen. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Amen. Amen. Pray all this part of the blessing of Abraham. So the first thing God says, don't go down to worldly ways. Now, worldly ways, you can't tell, Pastor, is this wrong? Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this right? Look at the principle. Is it taking a lot of your time? Are you losing your health, your sleep over it? Are your eyeballs swollen? Are you stressed over it? Are you looking at the prizes all the time? to see the fluctuations. So principles like this. I can't say this is right, this is wrong. Principles. God doesn't bless with all these sorrows. There's a verse that says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and listen, and adds no sorrow with it. 
Read what it means. In the Hebrew, it doesn't accompany with toil, painful toil. He adds no sorrow. The pain is not there. Are you listening, people? He adds no painful toil. SF, pain. No painful toil. So when God blesses you, amen, even though you're working hard, there's a pleasure. You know, your, your, your bodybuilders, uh, those are bodybuilders, I think we have one or two in front. Um, <laughs> enough of showing them. Lah, huh? <laughs> Camera on me. All right. I mean, you, you know that they say no pain, no gain, right? But, but actually what uh, they'll tell you is that the pain cannot be excruciating. It cannot be like sharp pain. It's got to be a pleasant kind of like, exercise got to be a pleasant kind of like exertion, not painful exertion. Or else you're hurting yourself. Now we're going to discover that, you know, right? You, you exercise. Yeah, there is labor, there is sweat and all that, it, but it should not come to a place of breathlessness and, uh, and uh, pain that is acute, all right? So, friend, when God blesses you, everything in your life is blessed. So when God says, I'll bless you, then God says, dwell in this land. There was Gerar. Dwell in this land and I will bless you. So what does God mean? The argument about blessing. Is blessing from God or what? You know, what is blessing? Or Pastor Prince, blessing means uh, uh, you have peace in your heart. And, and it, when you say peace, where you got the word peace in your heart from? Peace is in the heart and in the mind, yes. But where do you get it from? You got it from the Bible. Amen. The Bible is about peace. Amen. You got it from the old English, peace. Where do you get it from? The Bible, <laughs> amen? And you have the Greek word in the New Testament for peace is Irene. You have the Old Testament word for peace, which is what? Shalom. shalom. Now, shalom, you ask any Hebrew person, you go to Israel, many of you are going to Israel already, all right? Ask them, what does shalom mean? Is shalom only peace of mind and heart? No. Shalom is health, they'll tell you that. Shalom is prosperity. When they say shalom, they are saying, may all things go well with you. Amen. Inside, out, and all around you. Amen. Amen? Now, Pastor Prince, you are just saying that, okay? Or they are just saying that. Maybe the Bible meant something else. Okay, let's look at a scholar, okay? And this is shalom, definition from Mounts' complete expository dictionary of Old and New Testament words. Okay, Mounts is a, is a, is a Hebrew expert, okay? If you're, look, you're looking for an expert, so I put this down for you. All right, it's not just Pastor Prince saying it, okay? So shalom is one of the most important words in the Old Testament. In addition to peace, it can be translated as prosperity, well-being, health, completeness, safety. Now, is that a mouthful? So when I say shalom, what does it mean? Amen. And by the way, you cannot say it's changed because the only thing that's changed in the New Testament is the word is changed to Greek. But when Paul speaks to uh, the Jewish people in the, in the New Testament, in the church and all that, do you think he spoke Greek with his fellow Jew? No. Amen. When Jesus appeared to John and says, I am the first and the last, the first letter, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. But then when he talked to a fellow Jew, do you think he said Alpha and Omega? No, it's translated for us. He will speak Hebrew. What is it? I'm Aleph and Taf. The first letter and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Taf, you put together, is the fourth word of the first sentence of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says in the beginning, God, three words there. The center one is Aleph, Taf, untranslated. The heavens and the earth, three words. Make a menorah, center, untranslated. Which is a signature of Jesus Christ right from the beginning. He says, I am the Aleph, Taf, he revealed. That he is the creator. Amen. Are you with me so far? Yeah. All right. So very clear. Shalom. So when Paul says shalom, when Paul says shalom to his fellow being, fellow human beings, right? What, is it, what does it mean? It's a mouthful. Do you see it, now, people? All right. It's not just peace of mind. Yo, peace, bro. Yo, pre peace, bro. Peace. We, we mean peace, peace of mind. All right. Peace, bro. Don't go in pieces. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, it, it, the idea is there. It means complete. Completeness, right? Completeness. Not in pieces. Hello? How many want peace? 
Bible peace. Right? And every time Paul opens up his uh, letters, he says, grace and peace. Shalom in the Hebrew. Right? Irene in the Greek for peace is the same. Same. Same Bible. Different words. Sorry, different uh, 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 language of the same word. Okay, so God told Isaac, I bless you. Right? Bless you. Okay, look at the bless. Dwell in this land, I'll be with you, and I'll bless you. The word there is Barak. Barak. Now, what is Barak? The noun is God, like God told uh, um, Abraham, I'll bless you and you shall be a blessing. I will Barak you and you will be a Baraka. At the value of Baraka, you shall be a blessing. So blessing is the, the noun, right? Barak is the verb, okay? So this is Barak. What is Barak? So I say, God will bless you in every area of your life. Amen. Where it really matters, number one, relationship with God. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. The blessing of Abraham has come on us. Amen. Hello? Amen? Real quick, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law that the blessing, okay, Christ has redeemed us. Who is us? You and I, you and I. All right? We are now, we have been ransomed from what? The curse of the law. We are not under the curse of the law. Amen. Even though we're not perfect, we're not under the curse of the law. Okay, why? Because, by the way, it cannot mean anything but that we're not perfect. Why? Because if you say, Pastor Prince, it's only for people who, who, are, who are keeping the law. It makes no reason why is there a curse for him. Why should there be a curse for someone who's keeping the law? It only means something when people are not perfect. Right? But he says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. And notice the, the purpose, that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of what? Abraham, might come on the Gentiles, that's you and I, non-Jews, through Jesus Christ. How? Through faith. They may, we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Do you see that? So the blessing of Abraham, the blessing that brings every blessing is righteousness of faith. God has made you righteous with Him. You're so close, your position before God right now is so near Him. Say so near. So near. You are so near, nearer you cannot be. For in the person of His Son, you are as near as He. Amen. Okay? You cannot be nearer. You are in Christ, so near to God. When you pray, you must always have the sense, I'm like, not like God so far away. Talk to God. Amen? Some people just yell by themselves. They yell, oh God! It's like, you start from the wrong premise. Like God is so far away. Eh? Lovers don't yell, you know. Uh, you don't walk, you know. I don't know if they still date in botanic gardens or not. Like we illustrate. You find out all of a sudden you're walking in the evening. Oh, I love you! <laughs> what does she want? I cut us! I know it's a Japanese couple. Another one. Sarah! Yo! All the monkeys scrambling for oh, hiding him there. <laughs> right? I love you too! Oh, shame, man. Now we know where they are. You know, it's like, no one does that. Lovers don't yell. Lovers whisper. I love you. I love you. I love you too. Amen? Let's be in front of the parents. Love you. Sometimes far away, just... Amen? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> this kind of thing must teach you all. Okay. <laughs> so the blessing of Abraham comes on us. Right? So God says, I bless you. Say the word Barak. 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 Now, Barak includes blessing in the area of prosperity in terms of material things as well. Is that in the Bible? Okay, you say, Pastor Prince, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Okay, he says my opinion. Let's go to a scholar, a Hebrew scholar. This time, not Mounts. I find somebody else. The New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology. Sounds fancy? <laughs> These are scholars who are reputed, who write this kind of books. See what he says. Basically, Barak, or eulogia, by the way, eulogia is the Greek for blessing. Bless. All right? So, Left is Old Testament, Barak. New Testament is eulogia. Same meaning. Okay? Like you say, you say eulogy, right? It's from the Greek word eulogia. 
you good logia word. Okay, it's the, together it becomes blessing. Basically, barak, the Hebrew word barak means and do with beneficial power. When God blesses you, listen, in this time of famine, when God blesses you, you are endued with beneficial power. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.